Hi guys, welcome to another lecture and today we'll be discussing about neonatal sepsis. Before I begin, I would like to request you to like, share and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you haven't already downloaded our awesome app, please download it. We have uh, all the courses on discount right now and uh, wonderful courses are available for FMG, INES, uh, and NEET aspirants, even next aspirants and uh, the residents at pediatrics. So all the things are available on the app. Uh, the link is in description below. So please make sure you download it and follow me on Instagram if you haven't, if you haven't already. I post image-based question every day there. <clears throat> so neonatal sepsis. So neonatal sepsis is the most common cause of uh, neonatal mortality. Most common cause of neonatal mortality worldwide. Okay. So this is the first thing. Mortality. Okay. Now, the next point is that which is the most common organism to cause neonatal sepsis. So, according to the Dennis study, Dennis study, what is Dennis study? It is Delhi Neonatal Infection Study. It is the Indian study. And in this study, the most common organism was Acinetobacter. Acinetobacter. This is very important. It is not E. coli. It is not Klebsiella. It is Acinetobacter, which is the most common organism. The most common gram-positive organism is coagulase negative Staphylococcus aureus. Acinetobacter is around uh, seen in around 22%, while cones is seen in uh, uh, you know 15% of the patients. And Klebsiella, Klebsiella is around 17%, and E. coli is 14%. So this is the prevalence of the most common organism is Acinetobacter according to the Danish study and according to Ames. Okay, so that is the first. Now, neonatal sepsis has features of, uh, you know, infection or sepsis or blood-borne infection, uh, including meningitis, pneumonia, arthritis, osteomyelitis, and UTI. So that is why neonatal sepsis is, uh, you know, in India, very common. Now, sepsis is divided into two parts. One is early onset sepsis. Second is late onset sepsis. So early onset sepsis, that occurs within 72 hours. Late onset sepsis occurs after 72 hours okay and it may occur up to three months of age so the upper limit of lower late onset sepsis is three months of age okay now uh, early onset sepsis usually presents with respiratory distress respiratory distress at birth and uh, you know it the source of infection source of infection is maternal genitalia maternal genitalia is the source of infection and what are the what are the risk factors for early onset sepsis? Risk factors for early onset sepsis. So one is prematurity. Foul smelling liquor. Rupture of membranes more than 24 hours. One unclean. Or three clean vaginal exam more than uh, one or more than three uh, clean uh, vaginal exam. Prolonged, prolonged labor and perinatal asphyxia. So these are the risk factors for early onset sepsis. And early onset sepsis, you have to, you know, uh, the, this, this requires the treatment. Now for uh, maternal, when you have a patient with, uh, uh, you know, the amnionitis, chorioamnionitis. So what is the treatment of choice in mother for chorioamnionitis according to ACOG? The treatment of choice is you have to give two days injectable ampicillin plus oral erythromycin followed by five days of oral erythromycin. So this is the drug of choice for chorioamnionitis according to the ACOG. Now, late onset sepsis, the most common cause is hospital acquired infection. Most common cause is hospital acquired infection where we do not take care, wash our hands properly or from other children. That is why late onset sepsis has this. Now, the CNS is commonly involved, CNS involvement, GI involvement, they lead to NEC. Okay, then there are renal involvement, hematological involvement. Most part is UTI. UTI is more commonly seen or it is usually exclusively seen in late onset sepsis. It is usually not seen in early onset sepsis. That is why, <clears throat> uh, that is how you remember the features of sepsis is that there is high pitch cry, there is lethargy, poor feeding, hypoglycemia, 
respiratory distress, metabolic acidosis, prolonged capillary refill time, patient goes in shock. All these features are there for uh, patients of sepsis, which are seen in both of them. Now, again, we will go into most common. So, most common cause of meningitis. Meningitis. So, most common cause of meningitis in first week of life, in neonatal period. So, first week of life, most common cause of meningitis in first week of life is group, uh, it is it, uh, it is um, uh, step A galactic. Step A galactic. Is alpha hemolytic streptococcus and in neonatal period it is E. coli. Okay, the neonatal period it is E. coli. So uh, you have to understand listeria might occur in uh, neonatal period with uh, it is common, but it is not the most common. Okay, now what are the investigations that you will go for? What are the investigations that you will go for? So Okay, so investigation, the gold standard investigation of choice is blood culture, blood culture and sensitivity. It is the investigation of choice and that you have to remember. Okay, now you have to take 1 to 0.5 ml of blood and there is something known as sepsis screen. Now what is sepsis screen? So sepsis screen is a group of tests which include four tests. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So, uh, one is absolute neutrophilic count. Absolute neutrophilic count, which is low. Now, low according to the charts, age appropriate charts. And there are two charts that you need to know. One is Monroe chart. And second is Ozino's chart. So, Ozino's is for VLBW or LBW. And Monroe is for term infants. So, ANC is low. And uh, immature to immature to total neutrophil ratio more than 0.2. Then micro ESR. It is micro ESR. Micro ESR more than 15. And CRP more than 1. More than 1. Now some uh, books say that in sepsis screen, fifth criteria may be added. Total leukocyte count more than total leukocyte count more than uh, less than 5000 or more than 20000 or more than 20000 this is not in the routine uh, sepsis screen but this can be used as a good marker crp has a very good uh, negative predictive value that if crp is normal it is very less likely that the patient has neonatal sepsis but then again uh, you know you always have to rule it out if you think that the patient needs the lumbar puncture, then uh, you have to go for a lumbar puncture. And for lumbar puncture, more than for LP, cells more than cells more than 30 in term is abnormal. So that is why in lumbar puncture, average it is eight cells, up to eight cells, but up to 30 cells are absorbed absorbed in normal newborns also. So that is why you know it has a very poor usage and uh, culture sensitivity is better even csf culture sensitivity is a good uh, you know investigation now management management is very important now when you have a meningitis meningitis when you have a uh, three types of meningitis one is gram negative culture positive gram negative then gram positive so how do you know gram positive gram negative the culture has shown that there is gram negative or gram positive organism and third is neisseria neisseria meningitis so for neisseria meningitis 5 to 7 days least amount of antibiotic duration for gram positive 14 to 21 days for gram negative 21 to 28 days antibiotic is required in the patient to get treated now blood cs positive cs positive but no meningitis then you have to give for 14 days and sepsis screen positive only sepsis screen positive blood culture is negative and meningitis is also negative and sepsis screen is only positive then you have to give it for seven days so that is very very important prophylactic antibiotics is not given in each and every one of the people and that is why uh, this is the treatment that is for you know neonatal sepsis the other 
other therapy which is experimental or which may be used as last resort is exchange transfusion exchange transfusion we change the entire blood in severe patients or we can give ivig but newer studies have found that ivig has no role and third is gm csf gm csf granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor so this is the things that are important for neonatal uh, sepsis that you need to know uh, i hope you like the video if you like the video please like share and subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next one